Hello everybody, I'm Majority Actor P, and today we are here for the spoiler review for the Super Mario Bros. movie. I'm gonna get right into it because I need to talk about a lot of this stuff. And I already have, but with you guys. So, starting off, I want to go by how the, the events in which these things happen if I don't forget everything. So, spoilers, obviously. Spoiler heavy review. Literally not going to be no spoilers, so just fuck off if you haven't seen the movie. But I don't know why I'd be here otherwise, so let's get the fuck into this. Movie begins exactly as I thought it was going to, and I feel like a lot of people might have thought it was going to. The Ice Castle, and then the commercial. That like that was that was pretty obvious. So that, that was fun. And then you see Giuseppe. Fucking Giuseppe. Charles Marnet voices... A guy named Giuseppe. Basically, that version's Jumpman. Very nice, very nice reference. The references to Glass Joe and all these... The Punch-Out Pizzeria, the Duck Hunt Duck, all the photos on the wall of the Punch-Out characters. Very interesting. Awesome. And then it starts off with Luigi and Mario, like, raving over the commercial. I'm going over a bunch of references and Easter eggs because I fucking love them. Who didn't? If you at least notice them. Uh, Cape Mario and Cape Luigi from Mario World. That was cool to see. Um, and then the Super Show. I didn't react to the Super Show trailer when that came out because I didn't expect it. It just randomly came out on Super Bowl Sunday. I expected to see it while watching the Super Bowl. I didn't see it, which is weird that it came out that day. Maybe they intended on doing that. I don't know. But fantastic. I fucking love it. I love the Super Show. It's so stupidly bad, and it's just so good because of that. And the fact that they paid homage to the theme song is so beautiful, and I love them for it. And then we'll get to another musical thing later. Um, so then I, they meet Foreman Spike. Not the design I was expecting. Kind of wish they went for more of his old outfit with like the yellow overalls and the white shirt. I think that would have been really nice to see. Um, and if you watch my spoiler-free review, I mentioned at the beginning that there were very underutilized characters. And Spike was one of them. If you saw the movie, you know Spike was in the beginning for 30 seconds and at the end for like 15 seconds. Very underwhelming. They advertised him in the Nintendo Direct, too, as Spike. And he was there for that little time. Like, it's almost as if he wasn't really an established character at all. Like, he's at the beginning, like, oh, I hate you guys. And then at the end, he's like, oh, I still hate you guys. And then they defeat Bowser, and they're like, ah, oh, I love you guys. Like, I, they could have done so much more with him, and I hope they... He, he appears in the sequel. At, here's what I'll say. At least he was in the movie. Because, like, he was a forgotten character. A very much forgotten character. So it was nice to at least see him around, I guess. So, whatever. Then Luigi's phone rings. He mentions his mother. I'm gonna get into this. He mentions his mom. That blew my mind already. I think this is a good time to say that I recorded my reaction to the movie in the movie theater. So, I will have uh, myself... You'll hear audio. It, I don't have, like, my facial reaction. I'm not gonna hold my phone, like, right in front of me, like, recording my reaction. I just kind of had my phone like this, like, holding it up to my chest so that you could hear me talking about it. I'm trying to be as quiet as possible. Don't want to fuck up like other people's experiences. So I was trying to be quiet. I sound loud in the recording, but I really wasn't that loud. I don't think, at least hopefully. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> plays the GameCube intro uh, for Luigi's phone ringing. That was, that, that was pretty cool. He mentions his mother. The van is in the movie for like two seconds, aside from the commercial, which is kind of weird based on how much they advertised it. That's kind of unfortunate, but it's still cool that they had a van, I guess. And then fucking, the the whole beginning was just slapstick. It was more illumination style, but I loved it because it was another side of Mario and Luigi. And seeing all like the people and everything, it reminded me of like the little townsfolk from Wreck It Ralph. They kind of looked like that. It was really weird, but they, it was pretty funny. And then um fucking oh my god. So another thing I noticed, I haven't seen anyone else point out, is that on the Mario movie website, there's the Brooklyn couple where they have their reviews. And it says, our dog loved them, but they did a terrible job. 
That was the, it was those people. I thought that was pretty cool. I noticed that. I don't know if anyone else did. I haven't heard anyone say anything, but anyway. Um, then they go home to their fucking family. Their family. We meet Mario and Luigi's dad, mother, presumably grandpa, maybe uncles, other, I, I don't know. That was amazing. Charles Martin and I played Mario's dad. What the fuck? They're just gonna casually drop that? That is huge Mario lore. I was baffled. I was trying so hard because I was so upset we got a really quiet audience. I would have loved to just scream with everyone, but unfortunately we didn't. Uh, but you blew my mind. I wanted to scream so bad. That was insane. Not much to say about it though, but that was fucking insane and beautiful. And that is, I can't say enough about that. Then we go to Mario, Mario's room. He's playing the NES. He's playing Kid Icarus of all things. You see the NES uh, posters for baseball and something else. Was it hockey or basketball? I don't know. One of them. Uh, but that was pretty cool. There's the Star Fox R wing. Mayor Pauline shows up. And now here, here's the thing. I don't know if it was voiced by the same woman who did the songs for Mario Odyssey. Yeah, they're just hopping throughout New York. That's fun. And then. This is what I mentioned in my spoiler free review when I said it reminded me of the Super Show. There is an episode of the Super Show where Mario and Luigi are in a flooded, in their flooded city of Brooklyn or town of Brooklyn. And they go underground in the sewers to fix it. That is a Super Show episode. And that's exactly what happens. It's so good. It's so good. It reminded me of that so... It was one-to-one. -one. It was the same thing. So I love that. And then, you know, they blast through the brick wall underground in the sewers. Amazing scene. I love that there's an, just an abandoned, like, sewer area with all these pipes. It doesn't really explain how the warp pipe gets there. Also, I find it funny that the wall, when they break it, is just in the shape of Ape at Mario and Luigi's head. That was pretty cool. <clears throat> notice that and then Luigi gets sucked into the uh, warp pipe so does Mario beautiful I love that shit they go through they get separated again I don't know why they had to do that but they get separated Mario goes not much to comment on here because it just kind of goes forward at this point uh, Toadette is seen on a poster in a band but that's really all we know I find it really weird that uh well, I'll get to that in a second. There's the Mario Maker Toads. Pretty cool reference to that. Hmm, this is something that bothers me. When Mario's going through pipes, he goes through like a red one and comes out a blue one. And then he goes through a green one and comes out a different... That pissed me off. They're color-coded for a reason. That was not right, and I hated that. It triggered my OCD. Fuck you for that. That made no sense. Anyway, I, I'm not even going to say it's a nitpick. It is a nitpick, but to me it's a big deal because that's fucked up and it fucks with me. Anyway, they get to the castle. They say the princess is different in another castle line. They breath of the wild that shit with Toad cooking him a meal. That was pretty funny. Mario gets into the castle, gets chased by Toads, and Peach recognizes him as another human. I got excited when she said that. I don't know what she meant. But here's here's the thing I was mentioning before. I was a little upset that there was no Toadsworth. Why wasn't he in this movie? Like, there's an old Toad, but there's no Toadsworth. That's not worth my time. Where is Toadsworth? So then, you know, Peach establishes that she needs to see the Kong army. Then she meets Mario. They go do their training thing. I think that happens a little too quick, but whatever. Uh, that happens. And then Luigi, the whole thing with Luigi. Oh, oh my God. When Luigi's going throughout the stuff, you got luigi That was so fun. The, like the Luigi's Mansion-esque kind of stuff was great. And then the flashback to baby Luigi and baby Mario. They look exactly like they do in the games, but like quality. 
that was so nice. I love that cameos, those cameos. I wish they expanded upon it more. Like, I wish they showed a little more Baby Mario and Baby Luigi, but for what we got, I'll appreciate it, I guess. And then, uh, you know, Bowser meets Luigi, gets thrown in a cage. You meet Luma Lee, very nice. You see the Penguin King again and all the penguins, very nice. And then, like, they go on their journey, right? They showed bomb on Battlefield, Toasterana, in the Saiyan Kingdom from Mario Odyssey, and they showed basically Yoshi's Island for two seconds each. And it sucks because during the trailer, I was like, I bet they showed that just to get everyone excited and not actually so much of it. And I was right. I really wish I wasn't right, but I was. And so that was a little bit upsetting. They could have done so much that, that they could have just done, thrown little gags in there. Like, just be like, oh, there's a Mario 64 cannon, for instance, right? They could just be like, oh, we gotta get there quick. Bowser's invading. What are we doing? Fucking throw Mario in that cannon. Launch him. Like, there's, like, you could do skits with that. that would, something would have been nice. Like, you can't just do that. This is where the pacing kind of, like, just goes. They get the tr Cranky Kong. Apparently, Donkey Kong's his son. I think that's a little throwing off things a little bit, but whatever. You see Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong and Chunky Kong is not dead. So that's nice. Mini Mushroom, nice appearance. Uh, nice to see there. The Super Mushroom stuff. Oh, wait, no, I skipped a part. Uh, Baby Princess Peach, her origin story, kind of. Beautiful, beautiful. I loved it. Again, wish they expanded on it a little more. And she doesn't look exactly like she does in the game. But listen. I'll take what I can get. Awesome. So she's probably maybe a human. Don't know where exactly she came from. Maybe Brooklyn. They bring that up, but they don't know for sure. Whatever. Um, very nice. The DK rap. This is what I was talking about before with the other music. The DK rap. A little upset they only did the first verse, but whatever. It wasn't even really the full first verse. But whatever, I guess. I mean, it was nice to hear. They just kept looping it. But, you know, that fight happened. Cat Mario... You know, we could have seen Fire Mario. I don't know why we didn't. I'm still really confused why they gave Peach the better power-ups of all characters. But whatever. The blue Koopa Troopa kills himself. I, I, they could have... Is he alive? Is he alive? I, I don't know. I hope he is. Because that was a nice character we saw for like maybe like two minutes. Mario Odyssey references to the Bowser hat and the bouquet of piranha plants. It was funny when he stomped on that. Uh, <laughs> New Super Mario Bros. Wii reference, uh, Kamek has the Peach outfit on, which I thought was really funny. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this. The Peaches song, interesting. Uh, ha he was playing piano by Ludwig von Koopa, one of the Koopalings, I think that's what it said. Then the fucking eel from Mario 64 shows up. That was awesome. I did not expect that. When the eye lit up underwater, I was like, yo! Anyway, so that happens. They ride the barrel like Donkey Kong does in Donkey Kong Country Returns, which is pretty cool. So that's like a reference to that, I guess. And then Fire Donkey Kong shows up, all that. The, the wedding's going on, and then Ice Wedding Peach? Interesting. I was hoping Luigi would grab the Ice Flower because that seems to be like his thing. That's another thing I wish they used Luigi a little more. He shouldn't have been kidnapped in the first place. And if they did, they could have, you know, done some more stuff with him. Which would have been nice, but whatever. I'm missing a key part. I'm not going to pass King Boo and King bob -Om being there. That made me... I lost my shit on the inside, but I was in a quiet theater. So I was just like, oh. King bob -Om looked great. He sounded great. I wish they didn't kill him. Why did they kill him? I hope he's not dead because he just fucking exploded. I'm a little upset about that because I liked... Whoever, like, voiced the little grunts on him did a great job because I liked the voice I had for him. He was like... Rrr, 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 or something like that. I don't know. I'll see you again tomorrow. But whatever. I I'm a little upset they killed him off. Kind of. Kamek just disappears. Maybe he'll return in the sequel. Uh, for, like, something Yoshi's Island related. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Luigi is rescued. Uh, Lumalee didn't die. Ah, poor bastard. Uh, you know, 
And then fucking Bonsai Bill. Mario's infinite wisdom says, let's bring him into the pipe that we came here from. Sure. What? Anyway. Blows up Brooklyn. Everyone's dead. His family's dead. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, they all end up in Brooklyn again. The, the castle explodes into Brooklyn. I don't know how that fucking happens, but whatever. Um, they fight. They go back to Little... Pe uh, Little Mac, Pe not Little Mac, uh, Punch Out Pizzeria. Mario watches the film. Luigi gains the courage, even though we should have had this before. It should have been part of it before to help Mario fight Bowser. Great, great moment. I love that moment because, you know, it's my boy Luigi. You know, when I saw both Mario and Luigi reach for the Power Star, for the Superstar, rather, I nearly shit myself. Luigi used this. The, the superstar. I was really excited about that. And they Mario and luigi that fuck. Not really a reference to Mario and Luigi series. But still, they basically bounce bros his ass pretty much. Spike appears for another second or two. Yeah, everyone celebrates. Woohoo, yay. Still think Luigi could have had a bigger part. And maybe use some more power-ups, which would have been nice. Because, you know. But... That was basically the Mario movie. Post credits, nothing special. He's just the reprise of the Peach song. He's all small and in, in the little jar. In the jar. Post post credits, the Yoshi egg. Now this is where I. Before I get to that, I just want to say that was a, an extremely underwhelming post credits when they hyped it up. So just wanted to say that. Anyway, um, the Yoshi egg cracks and he's like, oh, like actually just does the Yoshi noise. Uh, wish we saw a little more. Uh, but, you know, I, same thing as Tails, I guess, <laughs> for, the Mar for the Sonic movie. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Now, the thing I was going to say about Kamek and this, why it tied into this is because I wonder if it's going to be more of like a Yoshi's Island themed sequel, where it's like Kamek is the big bad and he's going to, re he's trying to rescue Bowser or like save him so they can be the big bad again, which he probably will be at the end of that movie, like how he is in Yoshi's Island when he's young. I don't know, that's just my theory. Good movie, great movie, nitpicks. Didn't really go over all of them, but most of them kind of went over some uh, spoiler-free review, but that's about it. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at MajorityActorP, and wait for my reaction. I don't know what I'm putting it up. See ya.